Okay, so what we're going to need to do is uh, make up that um, a cold kit and uh, essentially the organisation would be behind this bench shield here. Um, I've actually removed the lead glass just because uh, uh, you can see on the lead glass over here it's uh, a bit frosted, it's a bit yellow so you can't see visually as well as you would like. So I've removed the glass, I'm not using radiation so um, normally you know have gloves on, you have all the lead gear. Um, so just for the demonstration purposes that's what we're going to do. Now the way I would normally have my uh, lab set up is that I, and people will have these stored in a fridge or a cupboard, there's every, all sorts of different methods but for, for this uh, scenario what I do is I have all of my kits um, plugged into the back of the, um, the bench shield. So if you've got, uh, don't have wings on the side then it obviously gives you the best uh, reduction of scatter and radiation exposure in any, in any case but it means that my work area out here doesn't have anything that I'm not using. So all I'm going to do is pull out what I'm actually going to be using. So I've got my empty uh, MDP pot or HDP pot uh, as per the previous video. We've already seen, um, done an inspection of this to make sure its uh, integrity is okay. We've popped the top and we're going to put that in as a cold kit into the MDP pot. So, um, so that's the only thing that's going to be working out the front there um, as a cold kit. Then we've got our eluate that we're going to be using. So it's, it's here as well, so we're going to pop that up the front. Everything else that I need is, is there. We've already seen um, the needle and syringe go together uh, in the previous video. We've got our saline uh, and we're pretty much ready to go. Um, dose calibrated to the side so we can uh, quickly uh, assay how much we uh, draw up. And the little red, um, um, I guess, uh, pots at the back there is, is going to actually have my needle cap in it so I can recap without the risk of needle stick injury. So let's assume that our um, eluit uh, was alluded two hours ago in 100 gigs in, in 20 mils um, uh, and now we want to make up a, a bone kit. We've only got um, five bones uh, today so we're going to make it up in eight gigs in, in five mils. So two hours of decay is going to drop that down to pretty close to 80 gigabex. So we've got 80 gigs in, in uh, 20 mils at the moment. We want eight gigs. So we need to draw up 0.2 and then dilute the, uh, the rest of it with saline. So pretty easy. Um, and then uh, once we've finished with everything, we're going to tuck it up the back here. Now I'm just going to put this um, uh, camera down, this, this phone down. Um, I'm going to try to suspend it so that you can still see what I'm doing. Um, it might, uh, you might lose some of the, the sound, uh, hopefully not. Um, but hopefully you can still see what I'm doing uh, and I can use two hands. So obviously the first thing that we need to be able to do is um, decontaminate and the approach that I like to take is I don't move from hot to cold, I move from cold to hot. So I wiggle it around there, then I wiggle it around and decontaminate the hot one, that way I'm not transferring any contamination in that direction and then that goes in the hot bin. So we just wait a second or two for, for that to um, uh, to dry. Needle cap off, needle cap goes in for recapping after. Now some people will do this, start to, but you can't see. So these are fairly robust, there's no reason why you can't just pop it in vertically from the top while you're looking at it. Um, the other thing to do, and this is a common mistake that people make, uh, and I don't know whether you'll be able to appreciate where it might be too close, but as people draw doses they actually get the line of the um, the vial and the line of the needle at angles. Okay, so they're drawing like this and sometimes it's because they're in here they're looking and they can see that there's only a small volume left and they're trying to get those last little drops or whatever. And when you do this, it actually opens up the puncher. Okay, so the scepter is broken open a little bit further. Air can get in, so it obviously decreases the um, stability of your product, but you can also get leakage. And because it breaks the vacuum, one of the advantages of actually having everything nice and vertical is that, first of all, this holds itself, so there's no stress. But as you're drawing it back, is that if all of a sudden, if everything's vertical and you've got a bit of an air bubble, you can flick it and the air bubble will drop to the top and sometimes if there's still a vacuum in there, it'll actually pull that air bubble back in uh, for you. Okay, so now we only wanted 0.2, right? So um, it's only a very small volume um, that we, we wanted to draw up. So. Um, in this case, it's not sucking back in, so with an evacuated vial, one of the things that you do need to be mindful of is that it can draw it back in, so if you're not actually holding your syringe as you withdraw it, 
then what can happen is it can actually suck that volume in and you've got to do the job again. Okay, so again, when you actually withdraw that, withdraw it carefully so you don't contaminate the end of the needle on the side to draw it out uh, in a direct line. You pop your um, eluid back down, um, tuck it into the side, uh, recap, and then that goes to the dose calibrator. So we pop it in the dose calibrator. Um, our calculations were perfect, um, as you would expect. And, uh, and so we know that we've got our activity. Now you're not going to leave that lying around like that because it is radioactive, so we want to do this relatively um, fast. So the next part is to then dilute it. So we're going to get our saline. That just goes in the bin. We don't want a messy workstation, so everything goes in the bin as you do it. So again, we take our needle cap off. And when we actually do our saline, we need to be mindful that an air bubble is going to go in. And one of the mistakes we see, and so this time I don't have it... Um, perfectly parallel, I have it at an angle, and I've got the needle tucked into the edge because I'm going to draw up uh, five mils or draw it up to five mils. So I don't want to suck any air in and create an air bubble unnecessarily. And so we're going to draw that out to five mils, right? Easy. So we'll presume that we've done that because I want to just quickly show you one of the errors that I commonly see is, is that when someone, um, when someone actually, I'm going to draw a little bit of air, when someone ends up with a bit of air in there and they go, oh, well, I don't know, uh, where five mils is going to be. So what they do is they squirt it back in, okay, because they saw that happen with, with someone doing it in the uh, elution vial or whatever. But in this particular case, because this is not sealed here, right, is it, and you've got air coming in, is that effectively what you do is you end up with doing that. So you can see that we're getting drops. So you're going to end up with contamination. You're going to introduce potentially your technetium into this, and then it's going to flow out. So you're going to end up with a spill, and this is going to be radioactive, so instead of being going into general waste, it's got to go into radioactive waste. So we don't want to be doing that. The other thing we don't want to be doing is, um, uh, you know, trying to clear your, your syringe um, like you see in the movies, where they pop it up, they pop it up like this and go, we don't want to be doing that with radiation. All right, so we've taken it up to our five mils, um, and we're pretty happy. So we're going to cap that needle. Um, well, we wouldn't need to cap it. Um, uh, I'm only just capping it so we can uh, uh, talk about the rest of it. Um, so normally that would just go straight into your vial because we've already calibrated, we've already assayed it, so we know um, that it's our, our 8 gigabex and we've made it up to 5 mils, so we're just going to go straight into the vial and recap afterwards. Okay, so, so that's actually pretty simple. The other thing that can occur, though, is if you're worried about the volume. So you can see we've got a little bit of an air bubble in there and it's not quite 5 mils and we're not sure, then... I usually needle cap it, uh, and then, and I don't have the screen here at the moment, but I'll just tap it against the screen, tap it uh, uh, back against the screen, um, and it would actually result in the air bubble dropping up, okay? So, so what we've got is we've got our um, uh, uncapped needle, we've just drawn it up, and again, is it um, just go vertically, directly in. We don't need to worry about holding it up, just straight in. Sometimes these are evacuated, so it will just suck it in, other times you've got to push it in. So you just push it in slowly and gently. Um, and you can, as you get to about there, you can start to feel it pushing back because it's a sealed scepter. So you're adding five mils of saline. It's already, um, it's not an evacuated vial. So now we've got more air, we're compressing the air. So sometimes if you really can't press it rather than bursting it, just let the air bubble back out and continue. Okay, and then what we want to do is actually take out our five mils of air to compensate for the five mils of saline that we've put in. Okay, and we just draw that out. Recap that, and that goes into your waste. Okay, so then of course we're just going to mix it. Mix it by gentle rotation or agitation. Um, some of it's just for 30 seconds and then you draw up straight away. Um, some cold kits uh, need incubation for five minutes or longer. When you do your rotation, there's no sense sort of just doing this. You want to actually turn it all the way upside down. Okay, to absorb any of the product that's up around the, um, the bun. Okay, so full uh, 180 degree rotation. Uh, and then that's ready to go. So then I just tuck it back up behind with the rest of the product and we're finished.